Well, hello, everyone. Um, I was part of a conference yesterday on apologetics, on the theme of reasons for faith. And so a lot of it was geared towards um, presumably for atheists and agnostics, but I would make the argument now and make the claim that the real audience is not really atheists and agnostics that are, you know, challenging um, the basis of faith. But I think the real audience for the, that kind of apologetics is really individuals who are, you know, hanging on by a thread, perhaps, in, in the faith, whatever faith tradition they're in. And they're, they've been considering or questioning their faith, whether God exists or not. And so they will engage in or learn from or gather materials from these kinds of apologists who will defend things like the um, you know the rationality or the reasonability of um, the resurrection for example or that Jesus is God or whatever it is um, you know usually it gets tied in with um, theistic evolution uh, intelligent design that kind of thing so, um, so I put this uh, luggage together. I don't, I don't really have a luggage full of Catholic, Catholic apologet, uh, apologetics materials. Although uh, I was thinking of an efficient way to bring these books, just in case I wanted to use them as props or some kind of um, sort of uh, objects to reference to say, hey, those are some examples of. Catholic apologetics books that I, I've read or have referenced over the years. Um, and of course, there's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of um, Catholic apologetics books out there. Um, these are just the ones that I, that was like foundational to my studying um, in the mid 2000s. So uh, the resources from the 90s and 2000s uh, around there, some of the recent ones too. Um, so just to go through some of them here. Now this uh, Bible, uh, I think came out maybe five or so years ago, maybe longer. Um, well, let me start off with this. Um, if you don't have one of these, this book, you know, there's probably newer versions of this kind of book. This is kind of out of print, but there's still, I have many copies of this. Um, still, I think I have like 80 copies, but it's basically a scriptural index for topics. Um, to you know, study on Catholic, particularly Catholic um, doctrines, um, the Catholic idea of justification, kneel why we kneel, what the Lord's Day, which is worship on Sunday, um, the body of Christ, Eucharist, all sorts of topics, baptism, baptiz baptizing infants. So uh, I met Tom Balbo. I, I New Joseph Bondeman, they're both passed away. Uh, you know, Tom Balbo over ten years ago, I think. Joe Joe Bondeman, maybe three or four years ago, something like that. Um, anyway, you could. I have like fifty copies of this, so if you want a copy of this, let me know, and I'll send it to you. Um, so it's locally published, so you're not gonna really find it anywhere else. Um, this Bible is. Uh, Catholic Apologetics Bible, and there's many of them out there, but this one's put out by um, St. Benedict Press, or TAN, um, right? So it's the Revised Standard Version Catholic Scripture Study Bible. I got it, like, last year. So um, a lot of different features in them, but it has, you know, apologetics um, materials, articles, um, pretty pictures. It's a pretty, um, good, um, uh, Bible to have. Uh, on one of these pages, it has a topical, like, kind of like that purple book, has a topical index for ca apologetic scriptural passages. So that might be a good Bible to carry around if you do apologetics. Um, now this book by, um, um, Peter Crave. Um, this is like general 
Apologetics is not Catholic Apologetics. These are both Catholic authors, uh, Father Ronald DeSelli over at Boston College. But they're basically questions about the existence of God and things like that. These are not like particularly uh, Catholic questions that are being answered. Uh, of course, it's good to have a catechism in the Catholic Church. Um, these books are like the classic books by Robert Sungenis, very well regarded in the apologetics world many years ago. Um, many books have come after that, but these, I think, have you know stayed um, helpful, I, I think, for, for folks that are still looking for these titles. And, and we still carry them at the Robertson Genesis store, so not by bread alone, it's about the Eucharistic sacrifice. Not by scripture alone is um, tackling the sola scriptura issue. Not by faith alone tackles the sola fide issue of the Reformation. So every question you want to have answered related to justification, got to get that book. Some uh, everything you wanted to learn about, you know, defending the um, or not defending, but <laughs> refuting the idea that scripture alone is our only authority as Christians. Um, this is a good book by Patrick Madrid about. Um, prayers to saints um any friend of mine is a friend of god uh prayers to saints the communion of saints things like that now this is what i think perhaps my first apologetics book um i don't re remember a lot from it uh, it was pretty high overview uh, answering fundamentalism by albert nevins uh it's our sunday visitor uh which used to publish a lot of apologetics stuff not so much anymore it's very kind of I don't know what you'd say, but born fundamentalist, born again Catholic. This was helpful to uh, Curry, uh, David Curry, uh, Mark Shea's By What Authority. It's a good book uh, tackling the issue of, you know, what ultimately what is uh, what, what is the authority for the Christian? Is it just the scriptures alone or is there a church? Is there tradition? Uh, and that's a good book for that. And I think they still have that in print. Uh, if you're into like end times um, rapture type stuff, this was a big deal back in the mid 2000s. Will Catholics be left behind? The, you know, Tim LaHaye's, I think it was Tim LaHaye, had a Left Behind series that was very popular. They made a lot of movies uh, with Kirk Cameron back in those days. Now, um, if you want to um, understand how the early Christians um, worshipped, then Mike Aquilina's um, The Mass of the Early Christians is a good book. Uh, if you like conversion stories, this is like 16, 15 or 16 conversion stories by former Protestants called uh, Surprised by Faith, or sorry, Surprised by Truth. And I believe that's the first um, book that Patrick Madrid published back in the 90s at some point. Um, Keating's uh, Fundamentalism and, or Catholicism and Fundamentalism. Uh, response to um, a lot of the big questions that uh, folks have that challenge the faith. Um, let me see if I can get... Let's see. Inspiration of the Bible, tradition versus tradition of men, development of doctrine, uh, baptism of infants, forgiveness of sins, purgatory, Peter and the papacy, infallibility, Eucharist, Mass, honoring the saints, Marian beliefs... Inquisition. Any question? You know, most of the the, the top questions you're going to get from um, the, um, Bible believing, so they'll call themselves Bible believing Christians uh, that want to challenge Catholicism. Now, if you want to uh, um, more topics, you got Essential Catholic Survival Guide by Catholic Answers. That's still a tried and true resource. Um, I recommend that for anybody who's wants to sort of high overview um, study all the different topics on Catholic apologetics. Um, Biblical Roots for Tradition by John Salza. So this is like John Salza's series of apologetics books back um, published in the 2000s. So this one's about uh, Catholic faith in general, so multiple topics. This one's on the papacy, purgatory, Eucharist. Uh, he has one on predestination, but, I mean, that's pretty obscure. Uh, it's, it shouldn't be obscure, but it, it, a lot of Catholics don't really get into the doctrine of predestination, so I, don't, I didn't include this in the suitcase here. 
Uh, and then Jesus, Peter, and the Keys was one of my favorite books on the papacy. I mean, it's not on the papacy per se, but it is like the prime, papal primacy. One of the first papacy books I, I read. Um, so a lot of it is about Matthew 16, 18, Isaiah 22, 22, um, Peter being the rock, a lot of resources, um, like Protestant sources, um, commentaries are included here. Um, I mean, really, that's it's a defining feature of Catholicism. So really, if you're going to focus in on, on any particular doctrine, I would say papacy is a big, big thing to really focus a lot of attention on. Uh, tradition, right? Um, but certainly sola scriptura and sola fide, because um, those are the, the hinges, the hinge, or the, 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 the formal and informal, was it formal? No, sorry, the formal and material cause of the Reformation. The reason why Protestants became Protestants were those two doctrines. Now, this book here is helpful to have. I don't know if Ignatius still publishes it teachings of the church fathers because um, wouldn't you want to follow you know the beliefs or the the practices of the early church fathers right what were the early christians writing about and doing and believing and this is kind of like a compendium of quotes from church fathers um let's see Let's see if we can. I don't know. Well, that's a good example. Something I highlighted. Let's look at that. This is on uh, St. Augustine on the topic of the church, well, the sacraments. Well, let's see what a St. Augustine says. You ought to know what you have received, what you are going to receive, and what you ought to receive daily. The bread which you see on the altar consecrated by the word of God is the body of Christ. The chalice, or rather, what the chalice holds consecrated by the word of God is the blood of Christ. Through those accidents, the Lord wished to entrust to us his body and blood, which he poured out for the remission of sins. If you have received worthily, you are what you have received, etc., etc. Right? Sermons number two twenty-seven. So it, I mean, you know, nobody has. I mean, well, some people do, but most people, most Catholics, don't have time to read through the Church Fathers. So this has been compiled for you to support Catholic doctrine, dogmas. Um, very helpful in apologetics discussions. So, uh, and then this book is a is a Protestant um, production, Christian Standard Bible, the Apologetic Study Bible. So it is focused on um, just general Christian apologetics, um, has articles. I saw one from J.P. Moreland earlier. Um, anyway, uh, I've always been eyeing this, the early editions of this book, uh, this study Bible, but uh, only recently got it, I think, last year. So anyway, um, the purpose, you know, um, the purpose of apologetics is not... Um, I would I would say that it is the responsibility of the Catholic, the ordinary layperson Catholic, to understand the faith at its most basic level for sure, for their own edification, for their own spirituality, for their own salvation for sure. But understand it well enough, just a little beyond that too, so that if there is an opportunity for some that where someone has a question, has a challenge, is struggling with uh, with a teaching of the church, is struggling with faith, with belief in God, with you know trusting the church or or, or whatever, right, uh, related to Catholicism or just Christianity in general or belief in general, that the person has enough tools in their toolbox, so to speak. And it doesn't have to be a suitcase like this, but just kind of general understanding. Um, that, like these days, you know, we benefit from technology, right? Back in the days before we had, you know, smartphones and whatever, you know, I had to I memorize a lot of like scriptural 
references and things like that. I highlighted things in my Bible. But now I don't, you know, generally don't even carry a Bible around. Um, it's on my phone. So if I'm trying to, you know, sort of develop a response to someone on the spot in my mind, I recall the gist of maybe a passage I'm thinking of to use to defend a particular um, faith, uh, teaching of the faith. And then I kind of just Google it and I find it on Bible, um, like some Bible website. And then uh, I usually, I, my favorite translation to use with Protestants is the ESV. So I'll look for the verse and use, you know, comma ESV, and then out comes the scripture. And then I could have it on the spot with my phone. So, you know, just again, just it's not just scriptural passages. It's just kind of like how to respond to not just intellectual challenges, but also emotional challenges, uh, moral challenges, right? How do you respond to someone, you know, who is pro-choice or is, you know, believes that you can um, um, go to other churches uh, on Sunday if you don't want to go to the Catholic church for whatever reason you want to, you know, spread the love, if you will, <laughs> try different churches. You know, why, why, why can't you do that? Like, why is it important to worship on Sundays? At, at the Catholic Church and and avoid you know any situation where you you might be a, might be sort of um, persuaded or lured into joining some other denomination some other religion something like that so it's just being better equipped uh, to understand your own faith but also share the faith but also defend the faith if you're being challenged um, with you know, why do you call, um, you know, your pastor father? Why do you pray to the saints? Why do you pray to Mary? Why do you um, go to confession and confess your, your sins to a priest when you can confess directly to God? There are answers to all those questions. I mean, I mean, just starting off, you know, without having to, you know, just have the confidence, right? There is an answer to, I mean, believe me, there there is an answer to every apologetical question, whether it comes from an atheist, an agnostic, um, Orthodox, Christian, a Protestant, Evangelical, Episcopalian, whatever. Any challenge, there is an answer to it. You just have to be patient. You might not know the answer right off the bat, but you say, look, let me look into it. Rather than, you know, someone shows you a scripture and you're like, wow, I never knew that's what it says. It seems like it's saying I shouldn't believe that the Eucharist is the body and blood of Christ. Like I shouldn't believe that I should, I could, uh, should confess my sins to a priest, that I shouldn't pray to the saints or to Mary, right? There's an answer to it, right? Don't just stop there because you don't know the answer. And unfortunately you weren't taught apologetics or you weren't taught why you do what you do or believe what you believe, but there is an answer to it. You just have to put aside the kind of pride or whatever to say, all right, that's a good point. I don't know the answer to it. Let me ask my priest. Let me ask my friend who I know uh, knows more apologetics than I do. Let me go to catholicanswers.com uh, or catholic, I think it's catholic.com or go to any of the apologetics you know, folks out there. I mean, of course, my favorites would be Robertson, Janice, John Salza, those folks. But of course, there's plenty of other apologists out there who are popular and they do a decent job so anyone wherever anywhere wherever <laughs> there's gonna be a youtube video there's gonna be a, a catholic answers article about it so you know stay strong be patient look for the answers um study it and then give the response all right um and that's it until next time god bless